Hi, this is Ryan Brown from MockQuestions.com. In this video, we'll discuss five firmware engineer interview questions from our website. We'll go over each question and some advice on how to answer them, along with an answer example. Afterwards, if you found this video helpful, please like and share. That would mean a lot to us. Okay, let's get started. Question number one. How would you explain firmware to someone in our organization who doesn't have a technical background? This is a general or opening question, which the interviewer will ask to begin the conversation, learn more about you, and uncover information they can use throughout the interview. This provides a great opportunity to direct the conversation towards subject areas that you are familiar with and can easily discuss. When answering this question, be sure to use simple, easy to understand and non-technical language and keep your answer brief and to the point. Here is our answer example. Firmware is just another piece of software, much like the programs you use every day. The difference is that it is placed in hardware that contains permanent or non-volatile memory. The purpose of firmware is to provide a set of instructions used by an electronic device such as a computer, phone, or just about any other modern appliance. Without the firmware, you and I or other software programs could not interact with the device, nor would it function properly. Question number two. What programming languages have you used to write firmware? Contemporary firmware engineers must be familiar with a wide range of programming languages. Originally, firmware was written in low-level languages such as C or assembly code. However, many types of firmware are now written in higher-level languages such as JavaScript, Ruby, or Perl. While there is no right or wrong answer to this question, your research should indicate the types of programming languages the organization prefers. If possible, include these in your answer. Early in my career, most of the firmware I wrote was either in C or basic assembly code. This was sufficient because the code was then assembled into machine code, which the hardware would access during startup. However, with the proliferation of firmware into a wider variety of devices and appliances, I'm now writing code using higher level languages such as JavaScript, C++, Ruby, and Perl. These are more efficient and enable me to create sp code specific to the device and its functions. Question number three. Can you describe the steps required to create a firmware architecture? During the interview, the interviewer will ask you how you go about performing your job. These are known as operational questions. Interviewers use operational questions to confirm your qualifications and understand whether the work you do aligns with the processes and procedures used by their organization. Creating any firmware architecture usually includes several fundamental steps. The basic ones are identifying the requirements, separating the firmware architecture from the system design, defining the time management parameters, testing the firmware, and finally, customizing the firmware for different types or versions of the device. Within each phase are individual steps that, are ver that vary depending on the type of firmware being designed and its purpose. Firmware engineers are engaged in each phase to ensure that their design functions properly. Question number four. Do you know of any techniques which can be used to reduce the power requirements for an embedded system? During the interview, the interviewer may ask you to help them resolve a specific issue. This can take the form of a simple question, or they may present you with a use case and ask you to resolve it. Most of these questions should be easy to address since they correspond with experience and knowledge gained in your previous roles. However, if you do run across ones that you are unfamiliar with, rather than solve the case, describe the steps you would take to resolve it, including gathering the information you currently don't have. There are several ways you can reduce the power requirements of an embedded system. One is to put the system into sleep modes and periodically refresh your operating system. If the system is simple or static, you can pause some of the non-essential functions such as a timer or clock when it is not needed. While these power reductions will be minimal, they will help increase the efficiency of the entire system. Question number five. 
please describe how firmware communicates with electronic devices, assuming that I have no technical background. The purpose of this question is to demonstrate to the interviewer how you would communicate with the individuals from other departments in their organization who are stakeholders in the projects you will be assigned to. Firmware can be thought of as the permanent instructions of an electronic device that needs to start up and begin operating. Another key component of most electronic devices is a central processing unit, or CPU, which is the brain of the device. These two components communicate using computer code over an electronic circuit for the device to function properly. When the device powers up, the CPU sends a message to the firmware asking for its initial instructions. It then executes these, which begins the operation of the device and sets up the parameters the device will use to function. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, it'd be greatly appreciated if you could subscribe to our channel. It really does help motivate us to continue creating videos. Thanks again, and we hope you stick around to watch more interview practice videos for mock questions.